Hey everyone, welcome. Uh, question for today, have you ever thrown a temper tantrum? Okay, now that might be too personal for some of you guys. So how about, have you ever had a child or been around a child who threw a temper tantrum? That's gonna be our conversation today as we talk about how we sometimes throw temper tantrums with God. Are you guilty? I, I have a feeling that, that there's a chuckle going on right now and it's like, oh boy. All right, so grab your Bibles, grab your journals, grab a pen, uh, get something to drink, a glass of water, cup of coffee, as we take a few moments to commit our day to the Lord, to dive into his word, to grow with him while you're grabbing all that stuff. I want to welcome everyone. My name is Ruth Hendrickson. So glad that you are here with us today. And the ministry is RHM International. And if you want to learn more about it, you can go to the website, which is ruthhendrickson.com. And I'll tell you more at the end. But right now, what do we want to do? We want to talk about temper tantrums and we want to dive into the word of God. All right. So back to my original question. Have you ever thrown a temper tantrum? You could just shout out yes or no right now. Have you ever thrown a temper tantrum? And how about not just any temper tantrum, but have you ever thrown one that's directed at God? Okay, now as good Christians, we hate to say that we could be angry at God, you know, but honestly, we can get angry at God. OK, and that is something that we have to deal with. You know, let me put this another way. If you're struggling with the term temper tantrum, have you ever become stubborn with God and wanted to do things your way rather than his way? I am definitely guilty of that. I remember our kids, one in particular, telling me that I didn't need to tell them what to do, that they needed to be allowed to make their own mistakes, that they had to learn from for themselves. And I'm thinking good grief. You know what? Number one, we do allow you guys to make mistakes. Okay. Don't as kids grow there, there are times when as parents, we have to back off and let them make their own mistakes. But you know, a good, healthy, loving parent, we also try to keep them from making major mistakes that will harm them. Right. Okay. I mean, such as little things like teaching them not to touch the hot stove or stick their fingers in the electrical sockets. You know, you can, you can fill in the blank with, you know, what are these dangerous things that we're like, no, you, you can't, you can't do that. My husband's an excavation contractor. We have heavy equipment around here. We have backhoes and bulldozers and, you know, you can't just go running out back, you know, as a little, little kid when that equipment's moving around. All right. There's, there's just certain things that, that it's like, oh my gosh. And how often does God try to keep us safe? And yet there's times when we're throwing these temper tantrums or we just get stubborn and we want it our way and, you know, and, and it's all about me. And it's kind of like we put him on the back shelf and we're like, no, I know what I'm doing. We try to go with our own wisdom. How does that turn out? Huh? All right. So anyways, back to this whole guidance thing, like I was talking about with the kids, you know, God does that same thing with us. He wants to guide us. and He wants to protect us. Right. However, there are times when he's like, all right. You can do it your way, how you want to do it. It's up to you. I'm just going to stand here and I'm going to watch. And that's really important because he may back up and let us do things our way, but he never disappears. And I want you to hear that right now. He never disappears. Okay. He will not leave us. He will not forsake us. Even when he said, you know what? You want to do this your way. I'm going to let you do this your way, but I am right here. When you're ready to turn and come back, I am right here. So let's pray before we dive into the scripture. So Heavenly Father, we just come before you and Lord, we confess that there are times when we are stubborn, when we are obstinate, when we throw temper tantrums. And Father, we ask your forgiveness for that. And for those who are in the middle of that right now, <laughs> Father, let us see your hand. Let us see your hand, God. We just want more of you. So Lord, teach us, train us, equip us. And God, I want to say right now, thank you that even when we're stubborn, even when we demand our own way, even when you end up stepping back, you never step away. You're always right there. You're always watching. You're always waiting. You don't turn your face from us, God. You love us. You love us so much. And we just thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're going to look at two sections of scripture today. The first one is a section where God lifts his hand and allows his people to wander. And the second section we're going to look at is where there's his covering and protection. And what I want to do is really point out some things that just stood out to me as I was looking at these. So the first one, we're going to look at Psalm 81, 
we're going to go to verses 8 to 14 in the New Living Translation. So again, Psalm 81, verses 8 to 14. And really look for what stands out. If you have some paper there, if you're at a spot where you can write, you know, when, when we're talking about this, what really stands out to you? And just make a few notes. Okay, Psalm 81, 8 to 14. Listen to me, O my people, while I give you stern warnings. O Israel, if you would only listen to me, you must never have a foreign God. You must not bow down before a false God. For it was I, the Lord your God, who rescued you from the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it with good things. But no, my people won't listen. Israel did not want me around. So I let them follow their own stubborn desires, living according to their own ideas. Oh, that my people would listen to me. Oh, that Israel would follow me walking in my paths. How quickly I would then subdue their enemies. How soon my hands would be upon their foes. Okay, so what I saw as I, as I read through this, as I was studying it, is number one is God did warn them. In other words, this didn't come out of the blue. They were warned and they were sternly warned. Okay, think of, a, think of an earthly father, loving earthly father, giving a stern warning to his child to keep them safe. Okay, that's this picture here that God has warned them sternly. He reminds them that they don't want to have idols. Okay, they don't want to have the idols. He reminds them that he is the one who has protected them, that he is the one who's rescued them. Remember, he hears, he sees, he's present. He won't leave us or forsake us. And he's the one right now saying, don't you remember? Don't you remember that I'm the one who rescued you? He also states a fact that he sees that they're not listening. Okay, he's not avoiding that. He's saying, you're not listening. And he's saying, I'm going to allow you, I have allowed you to follow your own stubborn desires and to live by your own wisdom. You know, verses 13 and 14, if we go back, they say, oh, that my people would listen to me. Oh, that Israel would follow me walking in my past. How quickly I would then subdue their enemies. How soon my hands would be upon their foes. You know, the heartbeat of God is always this. Oh, that my people would listen to me. Oh, that you would listen to me. That's what he's saying to you right now. Oh, that you would listen to me in every season of life, in every moment. Oh, that you would listen to me. Oh, that you would walk in my paths. Oh, that you would seek my face. Oh, that you would follow my commandments. How quickly, just say quickly, how quickly I would subdue your enemy. Yeah. He warns them. He reminds them. He looks at the facts that they're stubborn, that they're not going to listen, that they think that their wisdom, their human wisdom is better than his. And, you know, I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty of thinking I know better than God. Are you guilty of that? You know, um, you know, of forgetting how faithful he's been over the years of wanting things my own way. I, I as I was looking at this, I, I was thinking, you know, it's interesting in this, in these seasons where we're getting stubborn and throwing our temper tantrums and we go our own way and God's like, okay, I'm going to let you go. Isn't that often the point where we also get disappointed with God? We get disillusioned with God. We get angry at God because he didn't come through for us. But we were demanding that he come through our way where he's saying, I have a better way. And, but, you know, and, and so then we have to deal with all that, right? And, and often people walk away from God because they've been in a temper tantrum. They've been in a stubborn season. They've been seeking their own wisdom or human wisdom over godly wisdom. And they forget that the heartbeat of God is always for us and never against us. And we're all guilty of that, where every single one of us is guilty of that. Okay, let's go now to the book of Isaiah. So find the book of Isaiah, and it is chapter 41, and we're going to look at verses 8 to 13. So Isaiah 41, verses 8 to 13, and I'm actually going to read this out of the Passion Translation. But you, my servant Israel, Jacob, whom I've chosen, see to my beloved friend Abraham, I drew you to myself from the ends of the earth and called you from its furthest corner. I say to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you. I have not rejected you. Do not yield to fear for I am always near. Never turn your gaze from me for I am your faithful God. 
I will infuse you with my strength and help you in every situation. I will hold you firmly with my victorious right hand. All who rage against you will be ashamed and disgraced. All who contend with you will perish and disappear. You will look for your enemies in vain. Those who war against you will vanish without any trace. I am Yahweh, your mighty God. I grip your right hand and won't let you go. I whisper to you, do not be afraid. I am here to help you. So as I look at this, what, what do I see? Okay, I see you are my servant. I have chosen you. Okay, you are chosen. You have not been rejected. Okay, so we're chosen and we're not rejected. God also says that we have a tendency as human beings, we have a tendency to yield to fear. And he's basically saying, don't do it. That's like that parent saying, that's a trap, okay? That will harm you. Don't do that. Don't go there. This is that loving voice of our heavenly father saying, don't, you know, I know that you're prone to that. I know that fear is knocking at your door. However, don't yield to it. Don't do it. And why? I love that because he gives us a why. It's not just because I said so. It's because I am right here. In other words, don't yield. Yes, I'm telling you not to yield. But there's another reason. There's another component because I am right here. I am your God. I am your loving heavenly father. I am your protector. And I am right here. In other words, focus on me. Because when we focus on him, we are given or infused, not just with strength, but also with help in every situation. And that's one of the things I love about um about this the way that this reads I'm, I'm just looking for right here um do not yield to fear verse 10 for i am always near never turn your gaze from me in other words what's our focus where are we looking for i'm your faithful god i will infuse you just think of being infused it's like when we look he just puts that I don't know, lack of a better term, a heavenly IV and just infuses, he pushes in his strength and his help with every situation. And not only that, we're held with the victorious right hand. Now, remember in scripture, the right hand is a picture of strength and, and capability. The right hand of God is a reference to the proximity to God, the father. Okay, Jesus is seated, seated at the right hand of the father. Um, but it's also a position of power above all other powers. Okay, so Jesus the Messiah exists at the right hand of God today, perfectly reigning with God, the Father, and God, the Spirit, in, in, in that power, in that place of authority. And with that, when you look at that right hand, you know, he's saying, I'm holding you by that power. I'm holding you by that strength. I'm holding you by that position. I'm holding you by that authority. Okay, so it's not just that he's gently holding our hand. There's a power and a strength that's hanging on to us as he holds us with that right hand and infuses us with strength and it gives us the help in every situation. The other thing that really caught my attention is verse 12, where we're told that we, we will look for our enemies and not be able to find us. Imagine that. Isn't that something to dream with God? Oh, that I would look for my enemies and not even be able to find them because the Lord has dealt with them so much. So again, verse 13, I'm Yahweh, your mighty God. I grip your right hand and I won't let you go. I whisper to you, don't be afraid. I'm here to help. I whisper to you, don't be afraid. I'm here to help. Sometimes we need to get quiet with God so that, so and get rid of the noise, get rid of the clamor, get rid of the spear, just pounding at the door. So that we could hear his whisper, so we could feel that right hand holding us, holding us tight, so that we could be infused with his strength. Because see, that's also where the solutions come from. That's where the some of you guys need creative solutions. You need heavenly solutions for a current battle that you're facing. And my question is, where are you at? Are you back in Psalm 81, where you're fighting with God, where you're stubborn, where you're believing that you know best? Or are you seated more like Isaiah 41? where you're saying, you know, I know that I'm chosen. I know I'm not re rejected. I hear you, Lord. You're saying not, not to you would yield to fear because you are right here. You're telling me I need to focus on you, that you are my faithful God. I just decree and declare right now that you are my faithful God, that you infuse me with strength, that you give me help in every situation, that you hold me firmly with your right hand. Hmm. 
So Lord, right now we just take that right hand and we grip it and we're not, we're not going to let go. And we hear your whisper. We hear your whisper. And Lord, we, we align with you. So fear, go. Fear, go in the name of Jesus. Fear, go in the name of Jesus. Fear, go in the name of Jesus. You see, you're not created to live in fear. You're, you're created to look at God and know that he's right here. Am I saying that's never a battle? Absolutely not. I'm not saying that at all. Fear likes to come creeping in. It like slithers under the door. It comes in the crack. You know, it's like a mouse. You're like, how on earth did that thing find its way into the house? You know, that's what fear does sometimes. Okay. But the thing is, is we have a trap for God, for, for fear. That trap that captures fear and kills it is to gaze upon God, to know that he's right here, to hear that whisper, to focus on him, to grab onto his right hand and know that he has us. And to do that, we have to stop throwing the temper tantrums. We have to stop being stubborn. And we grab onto the father with a death grip that won't let go. I think of uh, some of my kids were really scared of thunderstorms and they would crawl into bed with us. And, and one of my kids in particular, it's like they would, they would hug my neck and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, it, it was that grip. It's like, if I hang on to mom, I'm going to be okay. Well, you know what? If we hang on to our heavenly father, we're going to be okay. Because he's got us no matter what the storm is around us. But we have to position ourselves accordingly. So, all right. So no more temper tantrums. Watch that stubborn and rebellious spirit. Oh, God's plan is so much better than ours, isn't it? It is just so much better. So um, again, he's got you. He's got you. Begin. Go back. Take, take Psalm 81. This is your homework. Take Psalm 81. And again, look for, for what stands out when we walk away from God. Then go to Isaiah 41. Okay. And, and what's the Lord showing you? Okay. How does it look like to really walk with the Lord and to hang on to him and begin to take that decree and declare? So if you're going through Psalm 41, 8 to 13, I decree and declare that I'm chosen. I decree and declare that I'm beloved. Okay. I decree and declare that I have been called by the Lord. I decree and declare that I have been chosen. I am not rejected, but I am chosen. And you begin to walk through it and just speak it out. Let yourself hear, let the atmosphere here align yourself and tell fear to go in the name of Jesus. Grab onto that right hand of God. Know that you're good, that you're, you've got, he's got you. He's got you. And so, all right, thank you for joining me today. Please feel free to share this. Number one, always share them. We want people to be infused with the power of who God is, right? Infused with his power. So please share this, write comments in it, help others. And also, uh, if you want to learn more about the ministry, just go to ruthhendrickson.com. And again, I get told that I don't say this enough, so I'm trying to get better at it. It is not something I enjoy doing, but um, I, I hate asking for money. Um, but honestly, I, I also do not want to steal away the opportunity to sow into the ministry. So with that said, if this ministry is blessing you, I'm going to invite you to sow into it or even partner, you know, whether it's a one-time gift or an ongoing monthly gift, we would just love to have you sow in partner with us. Um, the money goes back into the ministry. I'll tell you, it's, we want to reach the world for Jesus Christ and to see the church, the body of Christ, really find our voice and have the influence and the impact that we're created to have. So all that money goes back into that. So just ask the Lord about it. And if he says to do it, ask him how much and how often and do it. And, um, and so just want to invite you to do that. And also just go to the website, visit it. We have lots of resources on there. It is also the place if you need some ministry yourself, if you feel like you're in, in Psalm 81 there and you're stuck and you're stuck, you know, feeling stubborn or, or you're just stuck, you're just stuck. Um, we would love to, the opportunity to minister to you. And so that's where you can connect with the Mashaw team, the International Healing and Deliverance Ministry team. And so you can find the application and all the costs involved and everything on the website. So again, the website's ruthhendrickson.com. Have a great day. Be so blessed. Know that you are here for such a time as this. Know that God has not left you. He will not abandon you. He will not forsake you. If you've been throwing a bit of a temper tantrum, he is still right there. He's watching because he will not leave. 
he will not leave. The question is, where's our focus going to be? And who are we going to align with? And whose wisdom are we going to follow? So remember, you are here for such a time as this. He has wonderful plans for you. And he wants you to walk in the joy of the Lord, because that is where there is strength to know the truth, to walk in his freedom so that you can be all that he's created you to be. Have a great day and be so blessed.